So I'd like to continue the discussion about the impact of relative price changes on incomes of different groups in uh, society. Uh, in this context, we're going to be doing it in the short run. When we talk about the short run, we're talking about a situation where at least one of the factors is fixed. One of the inputs that is used in the production uh, cannot move out of that industry. In the partic this particular example, we're going to be looking at mobile labor. So labor can move back and forth between firms across industries, between industries. Labor can go wherever it wants. But capital has to stay in the industry where it's employed, maybe because the machinery can't be easily adapted to some, some other industry. So that's, that's the basic scenario we're going to be uh, analyzing. And we're going to be looking at uh, a situation where the price of X rises and the price of Y stays the same. In other words, the relative price of X rises relative to Y. So there could be a lot of different scenarios why this would occur. Um, but something has changed that causes the price of X to rise compared to the price of Y. We, other have, we also have this relationship about the payments to the two, the two factors. So labor in X is paid the value of its marginal product, price times the marginal productivity of labor, similarly for the wage in Y. And if we assume that labor can move back and forth between the industries, the wage in X the wage in Y and the wage in X are going to be equal. They're going to start equal, they're going to end equal. And so that's, that's a very important thing to keep in mind, that they, they have to, they're going to be pushed together in the end after adjusting to all the different changes that might be going on. And there are a couple of ways that, it, that uh, those can change, both for the price change and also marginal productivity changes. Payments to capital do not have to be equal. Payment to capital in X, payment in capital in Y need not be the same. They need not be the same in the beginning. They need not be the same at the end of this, sh of this short run analysis. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that they that they start the same. But there's no there's really no particular reason why that uh, would would be the case. It's just going to be easier to do this analysis on the board. So we've we're moving along here. The price, the wage of X, the wage of Y are the same. And then suddenly something has caused the price rise, a uh, price rise in, in X. And so that pushes up the wage in X. So this is the change in the wage in X, which is equal to the change in the price of X. So the wage in X gets bid up. Now we've, we saw that in the, uh, the very short run analysis, where the payments to labor in that industry uh, go up by the same as the price rise in X. Laborers in X could buy more of X and more of Y. And see the very short run video uh, if you want to get uh, more, uh, more detail. And so what happens is that there's now an incentive for workers to move from Y into X. And as those workers move into Y, I'm sorry, into X from Y, that's going to tend to push the wages together because there's this differential and people want to move. And so the wage in Y, okay, which initially hadn't changed, tends to start to move up. The wage in X starts to move down as the workers move from sector to sector. And that is going to continue until the wage in the short run in X is equal to the wage in the short run in Y. Now a couple of things to notice about this. One is that the wage in X rises relative to where it's, or the wage generally rises relative to what it started. So there's, a, there's an increase in the wage, but it rises by less than the price rise in X because of the movement of the, of the labor. So they tend to come uh, together. Now, looking at this depiction, again, the price of Y has stayed the same. The price of X went up. The marginal productivity of labor that remains in the Y industry goes up, bidding up the wage in Y. So that's the that, that upward pressure on, on the wage in Y. And as workers come into X, the marginal productivity of labor in Y and X tends to, to drop.
because you've got these new workers coming in with a fixed amount of capital. So the capital labor ratio in that sector goes down. Uh, in a decrease in the marginal productivity of labor. So this is going up, that's going down. How do we know that the wage finally um, increases? It's because the wages are coming together. There's this baseline of the original wage and Y, and as they come together, it's got to be higher than what the wage and Y was to start with. I mean, you can think about this is that, that firms in the Y industry are having to increase the wage a little bit in order to keep all their workers from all their workers from leaving going in going into X. So the wage does rise, but it rises by less than the price rise in X. So workers generally can buy more of Y. Okay, they've had a, an increase at the end of the short run that say the price, so the wage went up by uh, 10% and the price of Y hadn't changed, you can buy more Y. But if the price rise was an in of X was 20%, but the wage only goes up by 10%, then they can buy less X. So the uh, whether workers are better off or worse off depends on the, uh, the combination of X and Y that they finally want to consume. Okay, so that's, that's the labor side. On the capital, um, side, we start out, the price of Y is the same, stays the same, price of X has gone up, which is going to tend to bid up the payment to capital in the very short run. Again, see that other video. And so what we have here is that it's going along and then suddenly there's this price change and the payment to capital, let me get rid of this. The payment to capital, the change in the payment to capital in X is going to go up originally by the price rise in X. Okay, so that's again that very short run effect. Payment to capital stays the same in industry Y. And so now they are affected by the movement of labor. So capital can't move. But that doesn't mean that they're not affected by the movement of labor. So recall that labor is moving from Y into X. So the payment, the marginal productivity of capital in the sector where labor is coming is tending to rise. Not tending, it does. The marginal productivity of capital in X rises as laborers come in and are working with this fixed amount of capital. So that tends to raise the price of the payment to X, the, the capital in X. The payment to capital in Y is going to start to go down because the remaining capital is less productive because there's less labor that remains in that sector to work with it. So what you see is not a convergence as in the, uh, the labor market, but a divergence as capital is affected by the movement of labor. And so this divergence will continue until the point where labor stops moving. So once workers have no incentive to go back and forth, the impact on capital uh, stops. So let's think about how much lab, uh, payments to, to capital change relative to the price rise. For the capital owners lucky enough, if you will, to be in industry X, they've had the first bump from the price rise of the good that they sell and an additional increase in their payments because the marginal productivity of capital goes up. They can buy more of X because the payments to capital rise by more than that because of the marginal productivity change. They can buy more of X, capital owners and X can buy more of X and more of Y. They are clearly better off in terms of their purchasing power, regardless of what they buy. Payments to capital in the Y sector 
are decreasing, the nominal payments are decreasing because the marginal productivity of capital is falling. That marginal productivity of capital falling pulls down the payments to capital. They can buy less of the good whose price hasn't changed, and they can certainly buy less of the good whose price went up. So to summarize this, the economic interests of the different groups in the short run depend very much on whether or not you're the mobile or the uh, immobile factor. To the extent that you're immobile, stuck in the industry, then your, in, your economic interests are tied very much to the, the price of the good that you produce. If you're capital owner in X and the price of X goes up, you think it's great. If you're in the sector whose relative price has fallen, in this case Y, you definitely get hurt. So you are stuck and unable to move to get out of this bad situation because of the immobility of the factor. The impact on the mobile factor depends very much on their purchasing patterns, their consumption patterns. The more they buy of the good whose price has stayed the same, the better off they are because they've had a nominal wage increase. The more they buy of the, the good whose price went up, the less likely they are. They're actually going to potentially be worse off. If I mean, imagine that X was a, a staple good that everybody in the society purchases, say some say corn in a, in, a, um, in, a, in a society that really relies on corn as a staple part of the diet. The increase in the price because of an ex exports of corn might end up hurting people because it's a staple and a big part of the uh, budget of any, uh, any, any worker in the, in the society. So this is the you know, one version of the short run factor uh, model and we'll, in, a, in a different video we'll do the, uh, a graphical version. But I want to emphasize that in order to understand this, you really need to understand the very short run. So if you have questions about the initial setup, go back to the very short run video. Okay?